Here we have a frame of beautiful, mainly gold and red jasper and petrified wood, paleo points and knives. These come from a site we call Jasper Hill, which is located on the shoreline of ancient Pleistocene Lake Mannix and modern day dry, lake, dry Troy Lake bed near Newberry Springs, Mojave Desert, California. The uh, Clovis people inhabited this site as they did Harvard Hill and the Calico Hills. Dr. Michael Gramley has indicated that 80% of the surface artifacts in the Calico Hills are that those of Clovis origin, 20% pre-Clovis. Jasper Hill is Clovis and pre-Clovis as well, where we have the pre-Clovis points are more like uh, stemmed early type Lake Mojave type points. When Dr. Gramley visited uh, here, I took him, I had taken him already to uh, Harvard Hill and the Calico Hills, but this is the first and only time I took him to Jasper Hill. And wouldn't you know, I find this beautiful Clovis knife scraper while standing a hundred feet away from Dr. Gramley uh, when, I, when I saw this laying on the ground in front of me. These are all surface finds. And uh, this is a Clovis, oh, what you might call um, Swiss Army knife of the Clovis culture. It's both a knife and a scraper. It's very shallow fluted right here, comes up to about here. So it has a very shallow flute. And Dr. Gramley likened it to another Clovis knife scraper found in the Northern Plains well-documented piece that's practically identical to this. Now you notice these auriculate base is very delicately and beautifully pressure flaked to make those ears. And uh, this blade edge is the knife blade edge. And this beveled blade edge here is the scraper. So it was used as a scraper and as a knife. <laughs> Multi-purpose knife scraper. You might say the Swiss Army knife of the Clovis culture, and identical to the one found in the Northern Plain states that Dr. Gramley alluded to and compared it to, and, and they're practically identical in shape, and uh, uh, one blade edge being beveled and the other one being used as a knife. Just a very fortunate find. Uh, and then here we have another Clovis point this is fully fluted from base to tip, and Dr. Gramley likened this to a Northumberland. Now this point was an inch longer or two, an inch, inch and a half longer at one time, and then the tip has been resharpened. You can see all that beautiful flaking there, all that little pressure flaking, faceting of the tip where they had resharpened it down to a nub and then finally discarded it. That was the first Clovis point that I found at Jasper Hill. And then when I took my son, Russell Dempsey, to Jasper Hill, the first time he found this beautiful Clovis point, fluted from here almost halfway up the point. Would have been hafted like this, kind of a lozenge shape. The Clovis points at Lake Mannix, Harvard Hill, Calico Hills, and Jasper Hill are not the parallel sided, are not typically the parallel sided ones we see from back east. Um, these are lozenge shaped clovis and fluted points. They're, they're wide stemmed fluted points and they're leaf shaped fluted points. And that's how clovis made their points around Pleistocene Lake Mannix. And this is a beautiful example Plano convex, and then left as a story stone. We see the eye of the face there, the eye here, and the mouth here, looking at us. So once they used up points and knives, they just chipped a chip here, chipped a chip here, and they've got two eyes, and they've got the flute as the mouth, and they just left these. This is a mammoth now facing right, with this the eye of the mammoth up here. And this would be a mammoth now facing left, with this being the eye up here. 
And so we have the mammoth images and the face images that are required of a story stone, what I call a story stone, that I discovered back in October of 2020 at Harvard Hill. No one had ever observed these paleo story stones, face, human face, and mammoth effigies. One young human face is imaged and one old human face is imaged. And one young mammoth is imaged and one older mammoth is imaged on each stone. No one had ever observed those before. They're very common and found worldwide. And most, I would have to say most used up paleo points and knives were modified slightly at the end of their useful life and left as offerings, face and mammoth effigy offerings, likely to the mammoth god. This cult goes back 1.2 million years to Homo habilis. So these have been made, these story stone effigies have been made for over a million years. Homo erectus made them, Neanderthal made them, Homo heidelbergensis made them, and our Clovis friends at Jasper Hill made them. What a beautiful point that my son Russell Dempsey found. Here's a great knife I found some years ago, made out of gold jasper. Probably a Clovis knife, very beautifully done, very beautifully flaked. And then we have a number of uh, Lake Mojave type points. Lake Mojave type points here, Lake Mojave point type point here. One here, one here, one there. This is a denticulate. Uh, and these, uh, these two are denticulates. And then we have this little fluted Clovis point right here. That's fully fluted up there. It's, one tang has been broken in ancient times. But that's a little fluted Clovis dart. It's about the closest to parallel sided I've seen in the Pleistocene Lake Mannix shoreline areas. And then this is a Silver Lake type looking point here. And um, we have a wonderful face here with the eye there, the nose and the mouth down here. Uh, this was left as a story stone offering. Almost uh, all the uh, used up points and knives uh, in, uh, were converted to story stone effigies and left as offerings. So this is a Clovis preform. It was found broken in half, found both pieces, and this is fluted here. It's a Clovis preform, and this is the leaf-shaped variety. Very nicely flaked. Very nicely flaked. And then just recently got back from an archaeological trip this past weekend and found some great effigies, great knives. This is the eye of the mammoth, and it's trunk sweeping down, and it's been striated some. Now, all these artifacts are heavily windblown, so uh, if you're familiar with windblown or maybe even river polished flaking scars, then you uh, you can uh, see that the, this whole blade face has been flaked. That's almost been fluted from the base of the knife here. It's a beautiful, beautiful thin knife. Just beautifully scalloped all the way around the piece. Might have probably used as a flesher and then a hide scraper maybe on that beveled edge there. You can actually see another face with an eye, a nose, and a mouth looking up that way right there. Very cool. And that's the eye of the mammoth, when it, the, the mature mammoth now facing right. We have another eye down here as well of a mammoth facing right. We turn it over, that eye is the exaggerated eye of a baby mammoth with its little trunk now off to the left. And again, this becomes then the hair tuft above the head. We turn it this way. We have another great baby mammoth with this, the eye, and the point off to the right, its little trunk. And that's all been flaked in little flakes right up here to make the hair of the mammoth above the eye. Great baby mammoth facing right. And now we have a mature mammoth 
with this the eye here or this the eye facing left. Just an outstanding piece. I was very, very happy to have found that. These are all surface finds. Here's a rhyolite, uh, wonderful rhyolite story stone effigy. Here's the eye of the mammoth, its hair tuft here and its trunk over here. That's the mature mammoth now facing left. And when we turn it over, great baby mammoth with the eye here and the little trunk off to the right here. Great baby mammoth effigy right there. And this is a rhyolite, rhyolite knife flake uh, that was uh, made into a story stone face and mammoth effigy. Just outstanding. And then I was fortunate enough to find this beautiful spear point. Um, this is a rhyolite Lake Mojave spear point. It would have been hafted like that, so the blade would be sticking out of the foreshaft like that. It's almost all of its original length, just, just at three inches long. The reason why it was left at its original length instead of being used up like 90% of them are, is that there was an impact to this when it hit something and it sheared off this whole blade face right there. It just sheared that off. That's not too uncommon. This would have been thicker, as you can see from the base, all the way up here. But that blade face just got sheared right off when it impacted something. And they could no longer use it as a spear point because it was weakened. It would have probably broken upon impact, but uh, not quite sturdy enough. So they left this as a story stone offering with this the eye, the nose, and the mouth of the face looking off to the left. And a beautiful Lake Mojave spear point. Very fortunate to have found that. And also this Lake Mojave knife. This is a very cool, very cool lobed base Lake Mojave knife. And this is the blade edge. And heavily wind blown. And also a story stone effigy with an eye, a nose, and a mouth looking off to the left. And now we have a mammoth, mammoth facing left. So this is a wonderful little uh, rhyolite piece. Knife, beveled knife, like Mojave. These are uh, mostly all story stone effigies here. Here's a little auriculate based uh, rhyolite piece. Here's another little point. Uh, that I found there. These are all surface finds. Here's a pretty cool piece here. This is a mammoth with the eye here and facing left. This is a cool mammoth now facing right with this all the hair above the head and down its back. And we have a mammoth now facing left. We have another mammoth now facing right and that face is very cool. The eye, eye, and mouth of the face looking at us right there. Very commonly done where the face is put on the side of the mammoth looking at us. Oftentimes the face is going to be looking off to the left or the right. And uh, looking up from the back of the mammoth is quite common. But a beautiful translucent agate story stone effigy. And here we have a wonderfully fluted one from base to tip, a heavily wind blown prismatic blade type fluted spear point. The base snapped in ancient times, but that would have been quite a long spear point made out of rhyolite. So here we have a collection of Jasper Hill Paleo. Clovis, points and knives from Jasper Hill, Mojave Desert, California.